intention, attention, no tension. Intention. You want to write this down. Intention. Intention, attention, no tension. And today, this is going to be about interaction, right? You guys like to interact. I can tell right away. So where's my mic runners? Where are my? Okay, good. Who knows what intention means? What does intention mean? Come on. Yeah, come on. And pick someone. Just pick someone quickly. What does intention mean? Yeah, intention. Well, I got a lot of green stuff on this. Intention is what you choose to create, isn't it? Yeah, perfect. Let's give you a hand. And and by the way, how many of you have been scared before sharing? You know, you don't know everybody. You don't want to blow it, right? So when anyone shares, intention their greatness to come out. Intention their greatness to come out. Because when you intention their greatness to come out, what do you get? Maximum, don't you? Yeah, you get greatness. It's not its not the person's job up here as it is your job out there. And if you're all intentioning Steiner's greatness and everyone who shares greatness, you know, and my greatness, I mean, really, we all need collective consciousness to be, like, connected, don't we? We don't exist in isolation. So intention everyone's greatness to come out. And when you clap, clap as if you're clapping for you. It'll be louder. <laughs> Okay, so intention is all about getting clear on what you choose to create. Intention. Attention. Attention. What does attention mean? Intention. Attention. Huh? What's attention about? You know, Rhonda Byrne in The Secret. I love Rhonda. Um, You know, I I don't know if you said it. Okay, yeah. Should I share? So Chris and I, my, oh, Chris, when I say we, by the way, we is Janet Bray Atwood and Chris Atwood. How many of you think we're married? Chris Atwood, Janet Bray Atwood, not my brother. Well, we used to be married. We used to be married, but we're no longer. We hadn't been married for many years, and then I asked Chris to come and write the hardcover to the Passion Test with me. And we always stayed best friends and best friends. And that's because we realized that we didn't want to bind our life or separate ourselves through concepts. You know, oh, you know, we're getting a divorce. We can't be friends. You know, so we worked on it. We we did self-inquiry. And then he met this German woman while we were writing the book. And she came into the picture, and she was like, who are you, right? Who is, and can any of you ladies relate? Who are you, and why are you around? And uh, so we told her all about self-inquiry, about taking a look at your concepts, your limiting beliefs that are separating you. And now I am so proud to say, if anyone asks me, what's my most proud thing? I I am not only best friends with my business partner, oh, and you would love him. I mean, he is so clean. He's so, so sweet, so pure. And his wife, same, Doris. I'm best friends with her, too. Wait, wait. It, it gets better. I'm not only best friends with Doris, but Doris asked me to be the godmother of Sophie and Tiana. They're five and a half year old and they're two and a half year old. Is that not cool? And right now they're in Fairfield, Iowa, where I live, your very favorite vacation spot. And they're staying at my house. And and I'm on my way to California in some days to be with them and hang out with them. We're all going to meet. And this is what's cap- this is what's possible in the Passion Test programs. It's all about inspiring transformation through love. Everything we do is about inspiring transformation through love. You know, what is really the thing these days, and for all of you to start practicing, and this is a long sidebar, is to practice sharing with people when they gift you with something wonderful in, from their heart, a word or a touch or a smile, is to say, what I love and appreciate about you is, and really get used to doing that. Because what you appreciate appreciates, and that you meet no one but you. You know, you meet no one but you. And it, it is an incredible experience then because you know if you're seeing something that's not working for you, it has nothing to do with anything outside of you. It means that you just have to take a look within and see, okay, so where am I, where am I not in reality? Where am I out of reality? So sweet. So anyway, intention. Intention. I don't know how that happened, but it was cool. So intention is all about, you know, Taking your consciousness and focusing it, putting it on what you choose to create.
Now, attention, the passion test is right now the number one tool being used all over the world. All over the world. We have, um, well, how many? 1,400 passion test certified facilitators in over 50 countries right now. And growing, growing, growing. And, um, you know, what we talk to them about is, is really taking your powerful consciousness and focusing it laser-like on your passions, on your passions. Rhonda Byrne, and I was starting to tell you this, Rhonda Byrne came to Chris and I, and she was our student. She's the creator of The Secret. How many of you saw The Secret? And she came to us and she said, uh, after she took our program Alliance Secrets, which we taught online, she's, she got a hold of us and she said, I, I, I've got this little movie. And I thought, oh, she's a, she's a little mom. She needs help, you know. Really, I was in India at the time, and so Chris and I three-wayed, and we're talking to Rhonda, and I said, well, Rhonda, why don't you, why don't, you, why don't uh, I ask Jack Canfield if you can bring your camera crew to the U.S. and film? And so we brought about 70% of the teachers in the movie The Secret to The Secret through our alliances. And what that has to do with this is all about attention, because Rhonda, one of the things that I wanted to adjust here is that Rhonda didn't share what a lot of what I, I was watching people filming is that it's not enough just to go Om, I'm a New York Times best-selling author you know you got to write the book you've got to take action how many know that yeah so I hope you really know that it's not enough it is not enough intention intention Get clear first on what it is you choose to create. Attention. Then once you know, in the passion test, I'm going to have you come up with your top five passions. Once you know what you choose to create, then you, t you laser your, your consciousness. This is your consciousness. We have this beautiful saying. I love that I have two of these. Action engages attention. Action, and forgive me for turning on you, action engages attention attention really beautiful saying in the passion test action engages attention what that means is how many of you think and we've all heard you know it takes a you got to work hard to get the job done how many of you think it t it takes the, to get the job done in any endeavor it takes a ton of hard work how many of you think that raise your hands hi how many think that's what gets it done oh come on how many you know, you know it's a trick question don't you okay so what it is really that's getting the job done is consciousness. Action engages attention. So if you're not all over the place and having five million things going on, but you know what your top five passions are, and you're keeping your attention on the things that you choose to create, those five top passions, I mean, I, I say, gosh, if I could fulfill my top five passions, my life is doing really fabulous right so you take your powerful consciousness it's your consciousness so when you're engaged in an action what's engaged have you ever thought about that you know when when, you, when you're working in something what's you know you're focused aren't you huh yes or yes yeah so what's what's going on here is that your consciousness engages it's it locks and when you have a ton of things going on, have any of you noticed that it's hard to lock into, take that consciousness and really focus it laser-like? How many of you notice that? How many of you have had too much going on lately? <laughs> Isn't that intense, right? So this is why I love the passion test. One of the reasons why is because it's the only test you will never fail, number one. No blowing it here, okay? You don't need to be fixed. You don't need to be put back together. You just need to be seen. And that's what the passion test does. It allows you just to show up and just be yourself. Be, sh you know, shameless about being who you are. It's so beautiful. And so what it also does is it allows you to get so clear on the five top passions that, you know, when other stuff comes along, you look at your list. You're going to get these little cards today. Where is it? Yeah, you get these little cards today that says, when my life is ideal, I am. And, and by the way, it says at the end, this or something better. And I, we put that in because you're not the general manager of the universe. Have you noticed? 
And maybe you're not yet dreaming big enough, but I ha- we have this little thing that you write your passions on. Once you really know, this is it, this is it, this is it. But I, intention, attention, taking your powerful consciousness and focusing it on your top five passions, and that's what you're going to get today. But I'm going to ask you to take it over and over and over again, because you guys are what I call my passion babies, which means that you're just learning. Is that okay with you that today you're going to learn? And, you, you know, to the extent that you're clear, you know, to the extent that you guys are really clear, that you really know you, really, and that's what it takes to really know you and drop into you and tap into that heart value of yourself because passion comes from the heart, doesn't it? It doesn't come from the head. You ever see someone going, well, I feel, you know, nobody ever does that, you know, I feel, okay? So, you know, to the extent that you know who you are, you'll be able to laser like on those passions and it is really sweet. Okay, a left brainer is an analytical type person. How many left brainers? Okay, so you guys are a little more like, okay, when's she going to come up with the research? It's a little too touchy-feely here. This is definitely California. Okay, secret? Yeah, I know, I get you. Okay, and it's all right, you can stay. And one of the secrets for my little left brainers is this is in order to live a passionate life, and I want to congratulate you here because you're here, is and you haven't left yet, is that you stay open. That you stay open, right? To get to 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 get out of your box. And how many of you want to take a quantum leap today? So to get out of your box, you have to stay open, don't you? And is it always comfortable? No, there might be some goofy woman in front of you giving some information, right? Go like this. And you need to stay open because you know what? She might deliver something that could transform your life. Isn't that true? How many of you know who Jack Canfield is? Do you know that he's one of my facilitators of the Passion Test program? Marcy Shimoff is one of them. Stuart Emery from Success Built to Last. And the list, list goes on and on. And Jack, after I gave him the Passion Test, it was so fun. He was so clear. I, I love Jack Canfield. I hope you guys get to have him here. And I will help arrange that with Steiner because I Jack Canfield is just so great and clear in heart. Anyway, after I, ge- after I gave him the passion test, he went on Amazon when our book was coming out, and he actually wrote a review, didn't tell us he was going to do that, and said that after taking the passion test, it actually changed the way he lived his life. Is that cool? This is a guy who travels all over the world. And, yeah, I know, that's neat. And what also was really great is that he gives this program that you're getting today in his advanced program. So just know you guys are already so advanced. It's so so fabulous. So back to this. Intention, attention. So today you're going to come up with your top five passions. You're going to laser them on what it is you choose to create. There's this uh, Harris Poll survey that found that four out of five working Americans, and now I travel all over the world in a month. uh, No, sorry. In two and a half weeks, I'll be in Japan. After that, in August, Marcy Shimoff and I go to China, if any of you know who Marcy is. Then after that, I go to Tel Aviv. Then after that, I go to Bali. You know, And I have traveled all over the world for the last number of years, and I see that all over the world, you know, the statistics, some, especially in third world countries, the statistics are even worse, right? Can you imagine what that means to the world that four out of five people wake up not happy, not fulfilled, and not passionate? You know, is it any surprise that we read what we read and we see what we see and we turn on the television? You know, if you really want to go on a bummer, it's so easy, isn't it? You just turn on TV and you sit there and watch the news. And if you sit there long enough, you, you, you really get to, you know, go into all of your misery. It's, it's incredible. So what, what's so great about this is that you know, you guys are going to be these conscious creators even more than you already are. But i got to tell you, the fact that you stopped, you stepped out of your busy life, you walked into this room, you know, everybody said they had more going on than they, you know, than they needed, and you're here. That, what does that mean about you? I'll tell you what it means. It means that you're one of those 80 percenters, one of those, excuse me, 20 percenters. You're a 20 percenter, which means that you are conscious. You are conscious. Now you're going to even get more conscious. You know, as you have more knowledge, you just expand, expand, expand. What do most people do? The 80 percenters, they wake up in the morning and you know them. They turn on their TV. They watch the news. They get in their car. They turn on the radio. They listen to the news. They get to work. They talk to everybody about the news. And this is how they take their consciousness. 
You know, when I went to give the passion test to the homeless, it was such a huge gift to me. I thought I was going to give, I'm going to go give the passion test to the homeless. You know, well, they gave me. You know, it, and I tell you, I got humbled so fast. It was so beautiful. It, it changed my whole life because they were so incredible and they were so powerful. There's something really powerful, you know, about being so down that the only place to go is up. I mean, really, that is powerful, isn't it? And they were powerful. <laughs> and, you know, what I noticed, though, is that if you're out on the street, or, you know, having those experiences over and over and over again, it's just because you're playing a movie and you're repeating it, repeating it, repeating it of all of these awful things that you don't want to have happen, right? So what's so beautiful about the passion test is I always say if you don't, you know, if your life's not an Academy Award winning movie, you get to change the real. You get to change the real. Oop, okay, neural pathways, new neural path. Here we go. And it takes repetition. So intention, attention, first two um, steps to a passionate life, and then no tension. And this is the most important part of the formula. And this is where everybody, you know, I would say this is where about 80% of the people kind of space. They don't get this part. No tension. So you know your passions. You put your attention on them. You take action. You strike like lightning in all directions. You do everything you know to do. How many of you have done that with something you want to do? Now, here's the most important part, really, the most important part, because this is where the magic is. The no tension is you surrender, you let go. You say this or something better. I mean, once you've done all you can do for God's sakes, what can you do? You can't, if you keep doing, it's like you're straining on the mantra, right? That's what I say. Or you're stepping on the hose, you know, a hose that's filled, you know, that's you turned on full blast, but you step on it, you know what, the, you know what happens, right? It, it can't flow. So intention, attention, the no tension part is saying this or something better. And finally, okay, I've done it. I've done as much as I can do. And then, you know, it's time for me to let go. And what's so beautiful now, my, my left brain guys and women, I don't know why, because I'm not a scientist, but I get emails every day, really sincerely, every day from all over the world, from someone or s lots of people that say, this changed my life financially. This changed my life, my health. This changed my life, my relationships. What happens when you surrender is you create what physics calls a vacuum state, where the people and the places and the things start to show up. And you know when you're straining and it's so tight, no, no, no energy can go through. Have you noticed that? Nothing can come in. So, so how can you notice the gifts that's always there if you're so completely tight? So this is, a, this is the formula.